Ceremony by Leslie Marmon Silco. This text primarily takes place in New Mexico, northern New Mexico. It also takes place in Japan, parts of it. Um, it takes place, other parts of it, in Los Angeles. Um, part of this text deals with the webs that are being woven. There's the sequoia magic, the story that was released by the magician, where even the other witches said, call it back. You know, they didn't want that story to take place. It was too terrible. But the sequoia magician said, the story's been released, I can't call it back. So we see that evil taking place in the text, and we see the efforts of the old ways, you know, Batoni, the medicine man, Kush, his ways as well. Uh, we see those trying to make an end to the sequoia magic, but the sequoia magic is strong. In fact, it's so strong that uranium, nuclear weapons, are part of this sequoia magic of the destroyers. And so we're at this uranium mine because I want to show you what the uranium mine is and, and give you a little bit of information about it um, and see how it figures into the web of the sequoia magic. I'm here at Capitol Reef National Park, located between Hanksville, Utah and Torrey, Utah, and I'm at the uranium mines. They say that these mines are actually, they actually contain elevated levels of radiation, so you're only supposed to spend up to one day in this area. So I'm gonna spend one hour here because I don't wanna leave here glowing. <laughs> but um, uranium at one time was thought to be beneficial to one's health. In the early 1900s, it was thought to cure rheumatism and other ailments. And people would wear uranium in pouches around their neck. They would grind up the uranium into a tonic and, and add water to it. And that made a tonic, and they would drink it. And that was thought to be beneficial in the day. So in the 1940s and during World War II, uranium was made, was used to make the nuclear bomb. Um, it figured prominently in uh, the destruction of Japan, parts of Japan. Um, so that, in that essence, uranium figures prominently into the text. Uranium was also used in the 1950s um, in terms of, of the Cold War. Um, it was very important for the U.S. to have a leg up over Russia. So during the Cold War, the U.S. was exploring and mining uranium. And so we see in that final scene, open uranium mines, the point at which the last act of the text converges where the destroyers figure prominently and the sequoia magic is broken at that open uranium mine. The witchery had almost ended the story according to its plan. Tayo had almost jammed the screwdriver into Emo's skull the way the witchery had wanted, savoring the yielding bone and membrane as the steel ruptured the brain. Their deadly ritual for the autumn solstice would have been completed by him. He would have been another victim, a drunk Indian war veteran settling an old feud. But he wasn't, because Tayo did not give in to the destruction of the Sequoia magic. Because Tayo would not be part of the web that culminated in or at the uranium mines. He wouldn't give in to the drunkenness. He wouldn't give in to the violence. He wouldn't give in to the idea that white man's medicine, that, that the women, that his education from the public schools could have helped him or saved him. Instead, Tayo returned to the old ways. He returned to the medicine man, Batoni, 
He returned to the pollen ritual. He returned to the cattle, the woman, and sa. And all of that culminated in a greater web, the web of the ceremony that actually brought his healing.